Welcome to episode 512 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger at SellingYourScreenplay.com. Today I am interviewing screenwriter Dennis Paoli. He has written some classic horror films like Reanimator and just did a new film called Suitable Flesh starring Heather Graham. This film is based on an H.G. Lovecraft short story, which he's done quite a bit of, including Reanimator. We dig into this adaptation of the classic story. We talk about his process of adapting stories like this in into screenplays and how he approached this film. So stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast, and then just look for episode 500. And 12. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks, along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing screenwriter Dennis Paoli. Here is the interview. Welcome, Dennis, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Thanks, Ashley. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Uh, I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, and that's how I sort of became interested in the business because uh, I, in high school I met Stuart Gordon. And Stuart Gordon uh, and I hit it off. We had the same sense of humor. We both loved uh, horror films. We used to cut school and go see Hammer films and American International adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, we were college roommates when Stuart got into the theater. And when Stuart moved on to movies, uh, he we had already written together because we had been in a, a satire group when we were in high school that did the coffee house circuit in Chicago, oh. we uh, had worked on a couple of play, uh, written dialogue for several of the plays that he produced and directed with the organic theater company in Chicago that he started. Uh, and uh, so we had already worked together and collaborated. We were good writing partners. Uh, and when he decided to, when he decided to adapt La HP Lovecraft stories, reanimator stories, uh, the Herbert West uh, stories for the film reanimated for his first film. Uh, he asked me to work on it because at the time I was also an academic. Uh, I was teaching at Hunter College of the City University of New York. And one of the courses I was teaching was Gothic fiction. So this was a perfect melding. Uh, so to some degree, my way into uh, screenwriting was to be very fortunate. I was fortunate to make friends uh, and be a collaborator with a genius, a man who turned out to be a genius filmmaker. Uh, and I, it was fortunate that we worked in a mode, in a genre, horror, that I was already really familiar with, not just from loving it, but from mm -hmm. teaching it. Uh, so uh, my advice to young screenwriters is to get lucky. Uh, get, you know, work with, work, work with a number of people until you find those people that you really mm -hmm. work well with. And, and and make the most of that when you mm -hmm. find it. But that's not really luck. I mean, just getting out there, putting yourself out there, networking, meeting people. Um, some of that is definitely, you know, tactics and strategy. It's not just all about luck. Uh, you know, you have to love what you do. I mm -hmm. mean, as I said, you know, we, we landed in a genre that uh, we both really liked a lot and that we had loved since we were teenagers. Uh, you know, we also were, we, as I said, we worked in... Uh, Satire. We had a satire group based on the very much on the Second City uh, Theater Group in Chicago, uh, where we love to do satire. And I still think of Reanimator, the first script I wrote uh, that I worked on, as a satire of academia. Uh, it was, you know, yeah. We hope that we walk the line between horror and humor uh, as as successfully as we possibly could. Uh, and so it got that humor in there as well. We were mm -hmm. able to take advantage of our sense of humor, take advantage of your entire skill set. 
And, you know, one of the things you have to do is discover what your skill set is. So write, write, write scripts, write, but mostly write stories. Stuart was a great storyteller. His theater was a great story, nar- a great narrative theater company. Mm-hmm. So tell stories, get used to telling the stories and discover the stories that you want to tell. And then you'll be able to take that imaginative work with you to the next pro- to the next set of projects that you get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sound advice for sure. So let's dig into Suitable Flesh starring Heather Graham. Um, this is your latest feature that you wrote. Um, maybe you can just give us a quick picture log line. What is this film all about? Uh, woo, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck, Dennis. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on an HP Lovecraft story. It's one of his stories that has the most, uh, impressive narrative, uh, arc in it. Uh, it's as a number of Lovecraft stories are, it's a mystery and it's a mystery based on the identity of the main characters. Who are they really? And what it turns out to be is a mind swapping movie. No, wait, it turns out to be a body swapping movie. No, wait, it turns out to be a gender swapping movie. It's all of the above. Hmm. And it's all of the above in the most bizarre and horrific way you can imagine. Uh, And reaching back into Lovecraftian mythology and his fears about his own identity. Mm -hmm. So we hope that it is uh, what we hope. We hope it also is a return, especially given the director Joe Lynch's style and his ability to really his, his chops, his filmmaking chops. He uses all the all the tricks that that film allows you to use. Uh, We hope that it's a, it goes back to those eighties horror films that were sort of, that sort of had the audience uh, whooping and stomping their feet. And we hope it's exciting as well as being mysterious and scary. Mm -hmm. So just give us a little background on how you got involved with this project. Um, Since it's based on another HP Lovecraft um, story, was this something you wrote on spec? Was this someone that some producers brought to you say, hey, could you um, write this up? And then we're going to think, just tell us sort of how you got involved with this, this project. Uh, This is a long story, but I'll give you the short form. (laughs) Back in the nineties, back in the nineties, when Stuart was making a couple of our other Lovecraft adaptations, Castle Freak, a uh, very loose adaptation of Lovecraft's The Outsider and Dagon, an adaptation of Lovecraft's Dagon and Shadow Over Innsmouth. He was working in uh, in Europe directing, and he said, "Dennis, let's take, let's find the next story." And the next story that we both agreed on was Lovecraft's The Thing on the Doorstep. And uh, so he said, "Dennis, go write the script." I went and wrote the script. Uh, by when Stewart came back to the good old USA, he looked at it, he liked it a lot. He put on his producer hat and tried to get it produced. Uh, it was optioned, uh, in the late nineties, but it didn't get made. Uh, it was Stewart schlepped it around with a couple of his other projects while he worked on another couple of films, uh, in the early two thousands, it was uh, optioned again and it didn't get made. Uh, again, in about about 2005 or six, he showed it to a, no, a number. A couple of actors were interested in it. They optioned it. They moved it around to some producers. They couldn't get it made. We tweaked it a little bit for each of those times. Uh, but the reason the reason that came back to us on why it couldn't get made was the same every time. And I'll let you once you see the movie guess what it is. But the fact is, we I so I just sat on the script for a. a you know, for the the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. So one, for you screenwriters out there, let this be an object lesson. The script, when it was produced, was 25 years old, was over 25 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it, you know, the, a good story never goes away. Keep it in a drawer, but bring it out every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And during the pandemic, after Stuart Gordon, unfortunately, passed away, I was doing a uh, Zoom memorial for him. I reconnected with an actress from his earlier film, from some of our earlier films, Barbara Crampton, who is now a low budget horror producer. And she said, do you have any scripts lying around? I sent her the script. She loved it. She connected Joe Lynch to it. He had a great idea to uh, to tweak it a new an entirely new way. Uh, It refreshed the whole script. Uh, and it got made. And it's the it's the film that you will see style, you know, sometime this weekend it Mm -hmm. comes out. Look for it. It's getting a theatrical release and it'll be uh, streaming on Shutter, I think. So watch for it uh, and, uh, and let us know how well you think we did with it. Mm-hmm. But don't give up. It was it was that that's a it's a 
it had a lot of it's got a lot of history this story mm-hmm. uh, and we we think that helped it along the way actually mm-hmm. and that's that's fascinating okay so maybe you can give us some tips i definitely have some scripts sitting on my shelf that need to be refreshed um so what exactly do you i mean obviously 25 years ago we were living in a totally different world without cell phones social media so how just talk about that over the last 25 years how many times did you sort of just bring it out and try and update it refresh it make it more modern and then ultimately what do you do like what are some of those tips about five times I brought it out, and, may, and 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 you know, and you're exactly right. I had to add cell phones to it. Uh, I had to add uh, new gender awareness to mm-hmm. it uh, because it's a gender swapping uh, mm-hmm. film. Uh, you know, you have to be, you know, you have to be careful, but also honest about that when you do it now in a, in an entirely different way from an entirely different perspective. But I, I was lucky to one. Over that period, I was I was still being represented by Stewart as the as the possible producer and director, and he really believed in the story. You need somebody who believes in your in your work. Mm-hmm. You need to find that person who believe who gets that story and believes in it. But also, once we lost Stewart, but we found Joe. Joe was able to give me an idea that refreshed the whole movie, that changed the tenor of it, and made it more made it at once more current and more interesting. Uh, and you have to believe you have to you have to trust your collaborators as well. Mm-hmm. Film is a collaborative business. You have to listen to the notes you get. I know as a writer, I hate getting notes. You know, they're all, you know, what do you mean? You don't you just you don't understand. You know, that's a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. You let yourself sit with it for a couple of days and think about how where that takes the story if you did do that. And sometimes it opens up a whole new door that takes the story to a really new, interesting place. Mm -hmm. You gotta, as a a writer, you have to not only hope, you have to not only find those people who will listen to your tale and and the way you tell it, but you have to listen to people who hear your story and maybe want and maybe have a good idea about how you can tell it a new mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. Dennis, I wish I had more time with you. I could go on all day, ask you questions. This is great. I just, I wonder if you can give us a few quick tips of doing that adaptation, taking a classic HP Lovecraft story and converting it to a mo- modern screenplay. Are there some tips you can just offer our screenwriting audience? Yeah. Be brave. Don't be intimidated. Lovecraft is a genius in himself. But he's a genius in an entirely other mode. I taught Gothic fiction. He's a literary genius. It's his writing that's the genius. He's one of the great impressionists of American literature, which means he allows, he gives you the the strokes and you have to imagine the horror yourself. Mm -hmm. In film, you can't do that. You have to show it. Mm-hmm. And we decided, and Stuart was, a, when I met Stuart, he was an art student. He loved to show you. His theater was always, was always about grabbing you and showing you the horror or the humor that mm-hmm. was out there in the world. So we were expressionistic. We took it to an entirely different, uh, in, seemingly uh, contradictory style. But we remained faithful to what we thought was the core of Lovecraft stories, faithful Mm -hmm. to the spirit, the spirit of fear, fear for your own identity, fear for your own gender, fear for your own uh, for your own sanity. Uh, And we we hopefully found that carried some of the details Mm -hmm. into our work. But we were tried to be brave and stay faithful to that uh, spirit, but also tell it in our own way that was exciting for us. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And um, I just like to wrap up these interviews by asking the guests, is there anything you've seen recently, HBO, Netflix, that you can recommend to our mostly screenwriting audience? Uh, You know, (laughs) you know, I, I, unfortunately I've been spending my time trying to catch up with my reading. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been watching as many things, Uh, but I, uh, so I've been trying to catch up with what's on my DVR. Gotcha. What I DVR'd and I DVR'd Hereditary and hmm. it's terrifying. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the new, it's, it's the subsequent uh, horror. It's the subsequent kind of horror film to mm-hmm. ours where we made horror films back in the eighties and suitable flesh is a throwback or uh, a new version, mm-hmm. uh, which is out there, which is way out. But uh, the horror that came after that uh, is uh, including, for example, The Witch. I really like The Witch as well. 
Hmm. Uh, it was uh, a, a very faithful story that told it at its in a much different mode, at a much different rhythm from the rhythm I work in, but it was really effective and smart. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. There's some smart horror out there, people. Mm -hmm. Look for it. Yep. How can people see Suitable Flesh? What's the release schedule for that? Uh, October 27th, Halloween weekend. Perfect. It opens, uh, it gets a limited theatrical release. Look for it in your neighborhood. If you can possibly see it on a big screen, see it on the biggest screen you can see. Because Joe really put a couple of a couple of really wonderful visual, visual mm -hmm. scenes and visual adaptations in that. Uh, and it it'll be straight it'll be streaming on Shutter and a couple other services uh, okay. starting on the twenty seventh. Perfect, perfect, Dennis. I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me today. Good luck with this film and good luck with all your future films as well. This was fun, Ashley. Thanks. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye. I just want to talk quickly about SYS Select. It's a service for screenwriters to help them sell their screenplays and get writing assignments. The first part of the service is the SYS Select Screenplay Database. Screenwriters upload their screenplays along with a logline, synopsis, and other pertinent information like budget and genre, and then producers search for and hopefully find screenplays they want to produce. Dozens of producers are in the system looking for screenplays right now. There have been a number of success stories come out of the service. You can find out about all the SYS Select successes by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash success. Also on SYS podcast, podcast episode 222, I talk with Steve Deering, who was the first official success story to come out of the SYS Select database. When you join SYS Select, you get access to the screenplay database along with all the other services that we're providing to SYS Select members. These services include the newsletter. This monthly newsletter goes out to a list of over 400 producers who are actively seeking writers and screenplays. Each SYS Select member can pitch one screenplay in this monthly newsletter. We also provide screenwriting leads. We have partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriting leads services so I can syndicate their leads to SYS Select members. There are lots of great paid leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, we've been getting five to 10 high quality paid leads per week. These leads run the gamut. There's producers looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas or properties. They're looking for shorts, features, TV, and web series pilots, all types of projects. If you sign up for SYS Select, you'll get these leads emailed directly to you several times per week. Also, you get access to the SYS Select forum where we will help you with your logline and query letter and answer any screenwriting related questions that you might have. We also have a number of screenwriting classes that are recorded and available in the SYS Select forum. These classes, these are all the classes that I've done over the years, so you'll have access to those whenever you want once you join. The classes cover every part of writing your screenplay from concept to outlining to the first act, second act, third act, as well as other topics like writing short films and pitching your projects in person. Once again, if this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, please go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. Again, that is sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing writer, director, and actor Matthew Yerby. He is a Southern filmmaker from Louisiana and has a great story about how he started locally as an actor in Louisiana, small town Louisiana, just started getting acting gigs, slowly moved to a slightly bigger city, eventually moving to New Orleans where he started to get bigger roles and really started to put some of his own projects together. If you live outside of Los Angeles or trying to get your career going, Matthew has a lot of really great practical advice on how to find local opportunities and make the most out of them. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's the show. Thank you for listening.